Hello everyone, Neon Julie Puff here, and welcoming you to my latest installment in the Top 5 series. But this time it's not going to be a Top 5, we're doing a Top 6. Why a Top 6, you might be asking? The reason why it's Top 6 is because I am going to be ranking every Super Smash Bros. game from my least favorite to my favorite. Now before I start, I want to clear a few things up. So you might be thinking, why is it a Top 6 if there's only 5 Super Smash Bros. games? And while you are right, technically there's six Smash Bros. games, being Super Smash Bros. 4 3DS and 4 Wii U. So while they are very, very similar, they do have a few key differences that actually separate them. So in this list, they'll be treated as two separate games. And now that we have all that cleared up, let's move on to number six, my least favorite Smash Bros. game. Alright, so I know what you're thinking, and before you close off the video, just hear me out. So while I don't think Smash on 3DS is a bad game, it's just not as exciting as the others. Because while I understand why it's very lacking in the... because it's a smaller version of Smash on Wii U, but there really isn't much to do other than just fight. Because in this game, it's just, hey, Smash Brothers on a 3DS. It's portable, you can play it. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, there's still Classic Mode and All-Star Mode, but All-Star Mode is just Smash Attack, Smash Attack, Smash Attack, and then win. And Classic Mode is just, well, generic Classic Mode. It's not really super exciting. And then there's Smash Run, which is interesting, but it only stayed interesting for about, like, maybe three rounds until I got really old and I just kind of stopped caring about it. And once Smash on Wii U came around, I never touched this game ever again. In fact, none of my friends did. Which, I'm not saying everyone stopped playing. I'm just saying the people who didn't have a Wii U seem to be the only people who liked this game a lot more. I'm not bashing you if you do. If you like this game, then more power to you. I hope you enjoy it. But it's just not for me. There's not much to do in this game. It gets pretty old pretty quickly. And when Smash Wii U came around, it put this game underwater really quickly. And there was no reason to ever come back to this game. But, again, not saying it's a bad game, I'm just saying it's not as good as the others. But don't get me wrong, the character roster is amazing, and the stage roster is really cool. And that's really all I have to say about this game, so without further ado, let's move on to number 5. Ah, good old Super Smash Brothers. 64. I don't know what to call this game. Smash 1? Smash 64? What, what do we call this game? But anyway, I almost feel bad for putting it this low on the list because of how much fun this game is and how nostalgic it is for me. This game, honestly, for the first attempt at Smash Brothers, this is definitely far from a bad game. There's so much to do. In fact, there's a lot more to do in this game than there is in Smash on 3DS. There's board the platforms, break the targets, which is actually cool because every character has their own break the targets. There's classic mode, which was the main mode, which is why it's called classic mode with all the others, because it's meant to be classic and stuff. But anyway, this game is amazing. The roster, while it may be small, it is the game that introduced my main, Jigglypuff, and which ultimately inspired the whole Jigglypuff theme and branding to my channel. But enough of that. Let's get into why this game is as good as it is, but not on, you know, number one. The reason why is because this game, while it has a lot to do, is a lot of fun, it's nostalgic, it's imaginative, it kickstarted the entire Smash series. The only thing that's keeping it up above 3DS is, well, other than the modes, is nostalgia. And, you know, it's hard to admit, it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's true. Nostalgia is really the only thing keeping this game as high as it is. I'm not saying it's a bad game, again, I love all the Smash Bros games, but admittedly, this game has aged a bit. The lack of charging Smash attacks and a side special really does affect the game. In fact, I didn't even realize it had no side specials until I played it again on my channel for a Let's Play like two years ago. And it was really, really hard to adjust to. But still, despite that, it's still a really fun game. And, as Reggie said, if the game isn't fun, then why bother? I had a lot of fun with this game, and, and the thing is, Despite it being so simplistic, it's still a game that I can come back to at any time. In fact, all my friends come back to this game every now and then to play, because we're always playing Ultimate, so we thought, let's go back to the series' roots and see how much has changed. And the thing is, while it has aged a bit, obviously, 
it's still a good game, and I still love it to this day. And the Fighting Polygons are the best insert name here team in the entire series. Like, like the Wireframe Men, Multi Men, and the Mies, they don't have anything on the Fighting Polygon team. Their theme is amazing. This game is just a really wonderful and imaginative game. So yes, I still do very much enjoy this game. I don't enjoy it as much as number four, which is... Ah, uh, Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Wii U. You know, you and your sibling have really lame title names. But aside from that, this game is really freaking good. And you might be asking, why the hell is Super Smash Bros. on Wii U two tiers higher than Super Smash Bros. on 3DS? Well, let me explain why. So while they are pretty much the same game, having almost all of the same modes and an identical character roster, there's still a few things that Smash Wii U does better than 3DS. Like, for example, the console it's on, the Wii U, a home console. You see, now this was the first HD Super Smash Bros. game ever. When it comes to games, graphics don't really matter. They do to an extent, but I don't need a game to be Super HD, you know? But graphically? This game puts all of the previous Smash Bros. games to rest. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It's an HD, a solid 60 frames per second, 1080p. It is a breathtaking game, and sometimes I'd be just caught staring at all the graphics and the details, because this game is beautiful. And the way all the characters just clash together, it's just amazing. Somehow they managed to get all these art styles to work together, and it feels natural, it doesn't feel forced, like um, another game that we'll get to a bit later. But this is only number four, and there's a reason for that. Mainly because, again, the main modes. So while the core gameplay is fine, and it's also what got me into competitive Smash in the first place, the other modes are just... Uh, they're not that great. I mean, Master and Crazy Orders were good when the game first came out. They were fun to just play around with but it got old pretty quickly. And Classic Mode? It doesn't feel like Classic Mode anymore. It's just a bunch of eight-player battles on a random stage, and that's pretty much it. You get a trophy at the end, and it doesn't really feel satisfying anymore. And All-Star Mode? It went from look at all these cool characters in Smash history to Smash Attack to win. I get it. There's a lot of characters in this game, and it would have taken so long, but come on, it's just Smash Attack over and over again. And do you know what you get for beating All-Star Mode with every character? Because I've done it. You know what you get? Nothing. You get absolutely nothing. No achievement. No trophy. Nothing. Not even a congratulations screen. Nothing. And then there's Smash Tour. Now I get it. You didn't want to do cutscenes in a story mode because they got leaked back in the Brawl days. But, come on. A board game mode? Really? At least Melee had an adventure mode. It was small, but it was still a lot more fun than what Smash Tour was. Maybe it's nostalgia talking, but let's be honest. What would you prefer to play as a young kid? Adventure mode in Melee or Smash Tour? I don't know about you, but child me would probably like adventure mode in Melee more. Actually, come to think of it, I might like Smash Tour because I, I liked board games as a kid and I liked Mario Party. Huh. Maybe it is nostalgia. But still, Smash Tour is garbage and don't play it. But seriously though, I don't hate this game. I love this game. I would play every single day after school and I had a lot of fun with it. And you know, it's a good memory now. But with that all said, let's not drag on any longer. Let's move on to number three, which is... All right, so this placement in the top six is gonna be a little different because the negatives aren't really here. I have a lot more positive things to say about this game than negatives. So first, let's get the negatives out of the way first. Uh, one of them being the color. This game just isn't as colorful as Melee in 64 before it. And the reasoning is because the Wii wasn't that much more powerful than the GameCube. So in order to make this game look more impressive than Melee, they opted to make everything look more realistic and natural. And that explains why all the color is very dimmed and not that bright anymore. Which it worked for some characters like Link and Snake and Ganondorf and maybe the Star Fox characters? But for characters like Kirby, Jigglypuff, and the Mario characters, it didn't really work. Except for Bowser. You see, Bowser, it kind of worked, you know? He looks cool and ugly at the same time, as Scott the Waz said in his video. 
but that's pretty much it for the negatives. Let's get into the positives now, which there are so many. Okay, first of all, there are so many things this game did right. Sure, it did a few things wrong, but come on. The amount of things this game has done right is amazing. One of them being the roster and the newcomers. The newcomers this time were amazing, like Pokemon Trainer, Wolf, Lucario, Wario, Mario, Dr. Mario. I know Dr. Mario isn't in Brawl, it, it, it's a joke because a lot of characters have Ario in their names and, you know, there's four of them. But the newcomers to this game were amazing. We even got Mother 3's Lucas, which was exclusive to Japan and still is, and we still got him. And the addition of Rob the Robot was pretty cool too, I mean, he's not even a video game character. He's a video game accessory, made by Nintendo, and here he is, playable in a game, even though he did appear in a Mario Kart DS before Brawl, so I guess he fits the quota of being a video game character? But still, he's still just a video game accessory. And then we have Olimar, King DDD, Meta Knight, Pit from Kid Icarus. There's just so many good newcomers here. But my favorite out of all of these has to be the addition of Pokemon Trainer, because he's pretty much three characters in one. The concept, I loved that as a kid because I love Pokemon and after I got into Pokemon when I was about 9, for a while my main was Pokemon Trainer, mostly Ivysaur, but I would always go for Pokemon Trainer if not Wario or Jigglypuff. The modes in this game are a lot of fun too, like for example, Event Mode, Classic Mode, and All-Star Mode are still really fun to go through even to this day, I can always go back to Brawl and play those modes. But. There is one mode which kept everyone playing Brawl, even after Smash 4 came out. And you all know what I'm going to talk about next. That's right, the Subspace Emissary story. Try saying that three times fast. Subspace is an amazing experience. It is more than what Melee had, and it's even more than what World of Light is. Despite me loving World of Light, Subspace is the best story mode in Smash history because, unlike World of Light, it feels like a game on its own. It is an amazing experience. The cutscenes are fanatic, the music, the levels, and the story of Subspace can be comparable to something like Avengers, where all these characters come together to take down one ultimate threat. The gameplay, the story, the character interactions, and of course, nostalgia, I'm not gonna lie about that, is what keeps me always coming back to Subspace Emissary. But unfortunately, that's what puts it down to number three and not number two. It's because I'm only coming back for Subspace Emissary and not really for the other modes. While I do play the other modes, every time I boot up Brawl, I'm almost always playing for Subspace, and that's really it. So that's my reasonings for why I put Brawl in number three. So with that all said, let's move on to number two. Ah, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Now, this is a very special type of Smash Bros., and I don't exactly know why, because when it comes to people's opinions on it, it either goes one of two ways. Either you absolutely love it, or you absolutely hate it, and I don't know exactly why. Sure, Super Smash Bros. Melee may not be the perfect game, but my god, it is still an amazing game. Because unlike Brawl, all of the modes feel a lot more fresh in this game. It's probably because they were new to this game, and Brawl just took what Melee did and expanded upon it. But for some reason, they just feel that much more special in Melee. Like, Classic Mode feels like a whole new thing. Adventure Mode's still really charming, a lot of fun to play through. And Event Mode is where I really take a shining to Super Smash Bros. Melee. I mean, it is my absolute favorite mode in that game. But there's also Break the Targets, where every single character excluding Sheik, has their own targets level, and I think that's really cool, and it sucks that that isn't in modern Smash Bros. games. Although I do understand why, since modern Smash Bros. games have huge rosters, it would just take too much time to make individual levels for all these different characters, including Echo Fighters and clones, but it'd still be nice to have them back, at least a few more levels. I don't know why, but every single mode in this game just feels fresh and new, and it feels like they're all their own individual adventures. Now, it's probably because Melee was the first Smash Bros. game I ever played and owned, so this was the one I grew up with, and then Brawl came along a few years later, but I have a lot more fun memories with Melee. Even after I got Brawl as a kid and played the hell out of story mode and every other mode, I still always wanted to go back to Melee and play it because I missed some of the characters that were cut from the game. 
Dr. Mario was one of my favorite characters in Melee, and I was really heartbroken when I learned that he would not be coming back for Brawl. Sure, back then he was only a clone, and now he's only a semi-clone, but I really, really was torn up about Dr. Mario not coming back. Young Link didn't really care about him much because we had Toon Link, and he was pretty much the same thing as Young Link, but cartoonish instead of a child, so we weren't really missing out much there. Roy? I did miss Roy, but I barely knew who he was, so, you know, Ike? You know, I always thought Ike was cooler in Brawl, but we're not talking about Brawl, we're talking about Melee, and the newcomers do not disappoint. Now, in this game, they added 14 newcomers. Sure, six of them are clones, but there are still new characters that weren't in the previous one. And I gotta say, these newcomers were pretty cool. We got a lot of icons, like Princess Peach, we got Bowser, we got Ganondorf, we got Zelda, we got Young Link, we got Sheik! We got the Ice Climbers from the NES series, which is pretty cool. And we just got so many more characters. Even someone like Mr. Game & Watch. That's someone I literally had no idea who they were until Melee. And then we got Marth and Roy, which were Japanese exclusive characters until... Mm, fairly recently after Melee, I think. I'm not really a big Final Fantasy fan, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but... Yeah, I didn't know who they were, and I couldn't understand what they were saying. But they were both awesome, and they were cool, and Kid Me was absolutely in love with Roy. Marth was cool, but I guess the red hair, I was like, oh wow, the red hair is like fire, and that's really cool. I think I prefer Roy over Marth. But there are just so many positive things I have to say about this game, and I don't know how I'm going to get them all out within a short time frame. So I'm going to list them off here. So first of all, this is the game that introduced trophies. And as a kid, I absolutely loved collecting the trophies. And this game is so charming, too. Everything down to the sound effects and the aesthetic and the art style. Everything about this game, like, just aesthetically and just, like, you know, everything, like, the style of it is nostalgic. Like, the wireframe men, this weird race to the finish level, which I never really understood how to do this. I know you can just, like, go to any door, but, yeah, it's kind of weird. But I love the style, even though it's really simplistic. I love the art style. I love the sound effects. I love the sound font. I just... I, this game is just so charming, and it brings me nostalgia, and listening to these sound effects gives me goosebumps most of the time, because it's just... They're just amazing, and they remind me of being a child again. Classic mode feels new, despite being, well, classic mode from the previous game. It feels new and improved, and I really, really like it. It's like a really... It's like classic mode with a fresh new coat of paint, and it's just fun to play. And the new adventure mode is really, really cool. You start off as one character of your choosing, and you go through a Mario world, and then a Zelda dungeon, and then a Metroid world, and then it kind of goes downhill from there, and it's just random Smash battles, and it's not really a level anymore. But the first three levels are pretty cool, and I wish Melee did more of that, because the levels, I feel like those were like pieces of subspace, and it's probably where they got the idea to do a full platforming game within Super Smash Bros. But Adventure Mode and Melee, despite being only about 20 minutes in gameplay, it was still a lot of fun. And as a kid, I would always go through the Adventure Mode as all the characters, trying to get all the trophies, just exploring things. And the secret ending of Adventure Mode, where you fight Giga Bowser, that was absolutely insane. I discovered that, again, by accident. Don't know how I did it, and I still don't know how you do it either. But I discovered Giga Bowser, this fierceful, gigantic, evil, more like beast mode version of Bowser. And it's it was like, I was more amazed than scared. I was like, wow, this is, is this Bowser? I didn't know Bowser could do this. And it was amazing to like, just discover out of nowhere. It was like, it was like really like the highlight of my childhood was finding all these secrets in this game, collecting all these trophies, playing these modes, like all-star and event and classic and adventure and just, there's so much to do in this game, and unlike Brawl, I can come back to Melee at any time to play for fun, or to play Adventure Mode, or Event Mode, or Classic Mode, or any type of mode, just because it's fun. And it still holds up as my second favorite Smash Brothers of all time to this day, only being beaten out by one Smash Brothers game. Which, at this point, you probably know what my number one favorite Smash Bros. game is of all time, so let's not drag this on any longer. Let's just move on to number one, my favorite Smash Bros. game of all time.
Now, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is Smash at its best. It takes the best parts out of every Smash Bros. game, like subspace and cutscenes, stage builder, the adventure mode from Melee, and the classic mode, it, and, and the gameplay from Melee 2, and the graphics from Smash Wii U, and just the huge character roster, and the crossovers and everything. It takes all that, and it just combines them into one fantastic game, the ultimate Smash Bros. game. Every character from every game, no matter who they are, clones, DLC, doesn't matter, everyone's back. On, on top of that, there's newcomers. Some of them are, like, some are Echo Fighters, others are new characters, but there's still new characters, and there's DLC on top of that. And so many stages, like 104 stages so far, and we're still getting four more. That's insane. And the amount of newcomers, while it is small, still amazing. One of them being Daisy, which before, I was mad, I hated Daisy. But this game actually made me like Daisy. Sure, there's no Waluigi, but hey, he's still in the game, you know, and I can't complain about that. And this game has so much imagination, just like Melee. It brought back, like, like this game, it made me feel things that I haven't felt about a Smash Bros. game in years. Like, Smash on Wii U and 3DS, it was fun, but I didn't really feel the same way I did when I played Brawl in Melee for the first time. But this game, it made me feel like a kid again, like the magic was back. And I think the reason why is because you have to unlock all those characters again, and like unlocking all these characters and, and discovering them and just like finding them out of nowhere was amazing. And it really made me feel like a child again, because I, I was like, I was always thinking, who am I going to unlock next? Who's up next? Who am I going to see? Ridley? Is Ridley going to show up? Is King K. Rool going to show up? Is Daisy going to show up? I don't know. And the roster is the best it's ever been. Like, you can do so many dream matchups in this game, it is insane! The possibilities are endless, the rivalries never end! There's so many dream matchups you can do in this game, and the villains in this game, there are so many of them. So many villains. But, there is one villain that stands out through all of them, and that villain is... This is the game that gave me and many others our dream newcomer. Now, Ridley was my number one most requested character of all time in Smash Wii U, and we didn't get him because Sakurai said he was too big and too OP and they couldn't make him a playable character in a way that satisfied him and the dev team. But this time, they actually did it, and I cannot be more grateful for that. He's amazing. But there's a lot more new content in this game other than just the new characters. Spirit Board is honestly one of my favorite modes in the entire game. It is just so much fun. Now in this mode, you can pick between hundreds of different spirits and engage in battle with the spirit. And once you start a battle, you'll fight a puppet fighter with similar characteristics and personality traits with said spirit. And it may look kind of lame at first, but trust me, it's a lot more in-depth than it seems. It's a lot of fun. And when you do win the battle, something interesting happens. You're engaged into a minigame where you have to shoot the puppet fighter to get the spirit. It's that easy. Then you're granted the spirit and it's put into your inventory. Now let's get into the story mode of this game. Now story mode is a bit different than Subspace Emissary, but it's still a story and it's still an adventure. So while it isn't exactly the same as Subspace and it doesn't have that many cutscenes in it, it is still a lot of fun and I really enjoyed my experience with World of Light. Collecting all these spirits and going through all the worlds and the map and finding all these new characters, it was a lot of fun and it really did feel like a true journey, kind of like Subspace. And the campaign itself is actually pretty long, like it's a really decently sized game mode. In fact, it's long enough to pretty much be a game on its own. It's a lot of fun, and collecting all those spirits is really satisfying too. And in my opinion, they're a lot cooler to collect than trophies in previous games. I just wish they had a bio still. There's a whole online community who make screenshots and videos and like, me's and stages and they're all really, really cool. And there's literally a built-in video editor in Smash Brothers where you can edit and upload videos onto the Smash Bros. network and it is really freaking cool how they pretty much built social media on a Smash Bros game and it really brings our community together. Sure there are trolls, but there are still a bunch of people who make a lot of cool content as well. This game is amazing. It does so many things right and it's just really hard to hate a game like this. 
you can tell that there is so much love and care put into the roster and the modes, just everything. And that is why Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is my number one most favorite Smash Bros. game of all time. And it'll probably stay that way for a long time. Man, that was a long video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Oh my god, this was so much fun to make. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, even though I just said that. And it took a long time too, but man, am I happy with how it came out. And uh, guys... If you guys don't agree with my list, how about you go in the comments and tell me your favorites? I would love to know, like, I, because I love talking about Smash, and it'd be fun to talk about it with you guys in the comments. So with that all said, I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. And thanks again for watching. See you later, guys.